Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome back to my kitchen. I have another amazing recipe for you that is as old as the woods. And it is from a woman in my neighborhood growing up in Michigan and her name was Jackie. This is the same woman that also gave my mom the recipe that I videotaped for sauerkraut and sausage. And it's a Polish recipe from the heart is what she called it. So I'd love for you to check that video out too. I'll put it in a link above and you'll be able to watch it there and then at the end of the video also. So let's get started on this amazing Christmas nut roll that can be eaten any time of the year. All right, we are starting with five cups of sifted flour with five tablespoons of sugar, also sifted, and one teaspoon of salt, sifted, in this bowl. To that, we're gonna add my yeast. The recipe calls for two yeast cakes. Now, I remember yeast cakes as a kid. You stored them in the fridge, and they almost looked like candy to me, and I remember trying one once, and oh, it did not taste good. But I do not have yeast cakes, so what did I do? I had to Google it and see what was the equivalent to one yeast cake. And one yeast cake equals one packet or two and a quarter teaspoons of granulated yeast, active yeast. So we have the two packets here, which then comes to four and a half teaspoons. It seems like a lot of yeast, um, but I'm following the recipe and this is what it says to do. So we are going to sprinkle that in. I am using active dry yeast. Now I should have put that in my milk that you'll see me putting in later. And I made this recipe after this a couple times. And that's one thing I should have done in this recipe is I should have put the active yeast into my warm milk and let that sit for five minutes. If you're using rapid rise, you can add that like I do in this recipe. My first rise time took longer because I did not mix my active dry yeast with my milk. Now so. we are going to cut in one stick of butter. Now the recipe says to treat it at this point like you were making a pie crust. So that means to cut in our butter and we want it super cold, which it is. So we want to cut it in and not have it be melted or room temperature because you don't cut in butter unless it's cold. So we're following the recipe like it says, and we're gonna cut this in, and I have a cutter. If you don't have a cutter, you can um, kind of use your hands and just kind of kind of smoosh it around, but your hands are warm, so that's gonna heat up the butter. Or you could actually do it like they did in the old days, and they actually just took two knives and actually cut in the butter. I have done that too. So either way, Okay, we are good here. Now I wanna show you a little bit of the consistency so you can see what it looks like. It's just small pieces of butter that have been cut in with the flour. So it's nice and good. Our next step is we are going to add our three beaten egg yolks and it says well beaten. So I really want those well beaten egg yolks and a half a cup of milk. Whoa. And then we're going to mix this up. And it does not say knead it, which is kind of weird that I'm not gonna be kneading it. So I'm gonna get my hands in there. One hand, keep one hand clean. So far, it seems kind of dry. I'm so used to working with sourdough now that is wet dough that this is like, um, a little dry to me. I'm scared. How is this gonna all come together? But they said, you know, like a pie crust, which that is like a pie crust. So I feel like I've kind of made pie crust, but that would have called for a lot more butter. I mean, how is this going to rise? Um, I gotta go check my recipe, guys. Make sure I did this right, because we are really dry. So there's no way this is gonna rise. Kathy Cooks for you is having a debacle. So let me double check. Let me just let that be. And maybe I was supposed to use one cup of milk. I, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll get back with you. Okay, so when in doubt, you always call your mommy and ask for help. 
and she said she gave me two options she said you can start adding some of the egg white in and to get it to come together or add more milk so i'm going the add more milk route so i'm going to start by adding um two tablespoons of milk and we're going to see what happens here real scary stuff here when you're following a recipe and your dough does not look like a proper dough i ended up putting eight extra tablespoons which is another half cup so this recipe should have one cup of milk i also tried it a couple other ways i tried using the egg whites as well as the three egg yolks and two tablespoons of milk extra um either way worked so it's up to you okay everything's together it seems um too dense to rise it has the consistency consistency of a sticky pie crust um, it's too wet now to be pie crust to have that feel um, so yeah we're just gonna take a picture of it and see and just see if it actually is rising I'm gonna put it in my oven with the light on and I might put my oven on for like three minutes first two or three minutes just so it's warm so that we could uh, see if this is rising so let's cross our fingers Okay, let's pull it out. <sighs> yes, <gasps> it has. It has risen. Oh, thank goodness. I was so scared. So I'm going to push this down now. And then I'm just going to... Now that butter is still separated. I could feel it. And I've got to let it rise again. It is time for step number two, and that is making our filling. So let's get going on this filling. It, um, it's a little interesting also. Great walnut filling. The recipe my mom put in there says double this. So what I'm showing you is double what Jackie's recipe says. So... If you don't want it doubled, that's fine. I'll put it as non-doubled in my description, and then I'll put a little blurb on there that I doubled it. All right, we are gonna cook this, which sounds a little odd to me. We are putting two sticks of butter, because we're doubling it, into our pan. And we are going to melt this. Then we are going to put in our two cups of ground nuts which is this is four and our two eggs which and our four egg yolks which is double all right butter is melted i forgot it called for two cups sugar too so we're gonna put the two cups sugar and don't worry about that that was just some nuts because i used the same bowl i'm gonna put the sugar in i've got it on low now i'm gonna add I'm actually gonna turn it off heat. I'm gonna add in my egg, because it's really low temperature right now. And I'm gonna whisk that in so it doesn't cook. It doesn't say to do this, but I did not want it to curdle. And now I'm going to, see it has not curdled. Now I'm going to add in my nuts. I'm going to stir this up before I put the heat back on. I just don't want that egg to curdle on me. Okay, now I'm going to put the heat back on, on low, and cook it for a little bit. All right, we're done. Um, the consistency has changed some. This seems like so much filling. This can easily be frozen and used again, so we'll see if I use it all. Our dough has risen again beautifully. Yes, it was scary. I you had to improvise, um, but it is beautiful. And now it is time to roll this out. The recipe says to roll out to a half inch thick. That seems quite thick. Uh, so I don't know if I could follow those directions. We shall see.
as you'll see in the video, I did not follow the directions and I found out why you should roll it to a half inch. I did not put this in the video, but you should roll it to a half inch because the filling is a thick filling and there's a lot of it. So if you have a thin pastry dough, all your goodies inside are going to ooze out. Now, thank goodness, those goodies were so delicious on the outside um, when they oozed out, I ate them. It was like um, a Florentine. Have you ever had one of those cookies? It was absolutely spectacular, so I didn't cry too much and it was still turned out delicious. But roll it out to a half inch, not a quarter inch like I do in this video. Get out our interesting dough that still has like the butter separated, but you can definitely see our yeast has done its job. So let's push this, punch this down and let's get this baby rolled out. And really, uh, the thickness is probably more of a preference than anything. Because right there is a half inch. Um, I don't even know how one single recipe of the filling would fit in this, let alone the doubling. And um, so I'm sure I will be freezing some of that filling. And that is absolutely fine. I don't know why it wouldn't freeze beautifully. Now that looks like a right size to me. Again, another vintage recipe that does not call for vanilla. I just find that interesting. Are we just fools putting vanilla in everything? <gasps> I shouldn't have said that. My mommy loves her vanilla. She is no fool. Sorry, Joy, you are no fool. We're just gonna roll this up. Oh my gosh, guys. Can you see how my edges are a little thinner? We'll take care of that here in a second. This dough looks great. Um, definitely was scary, for sure. We're gonna seal with egg white, and then we are also going to do a wash. And we'll just create a nice little seal here. This works as our glue. We don't want any of this deliciousness coming out, do we? Oh man, okay. And then we're just going to fold it on top there. And really let that sit. Okay, we're gonna tuck in our edges. We do not want any liquid coming out. You can even seal a little bit there if you wanted. But we're gonna be putting egg wash over the whole thing. Now, see how we have some parts that are bigger than others? We can kind of just make it uniform. See how uniform and beautiful that is? OMG, guys. We are going to put this on a buttered pan here. Wow. You do not have to turn it if you do not want to. You can keep it straight. Kind of works better with my pan like this. And then we are also going to put a wash over the whole thing. Now we are going to let this rise for another hour. Maybe I should have put the egg wash on later, I don't know. We'll see. Hindsight, I probably should have waited on the, on the egg wash until after the rise, but I'm just doing the whole thing. Because I started, I put the egg wash on and I want my nuts to stick. And there you have it. Does that not look absolutely spectacular? Not even cooked. I can't wait. I think it's going to be dinner. This is going to be dinner because it's already like 445 and, um, you know, I was going to do some chicken tacos, but who wants to eat a chicken taco when I can have this? So I'm going to cover this and put this back in the oven to rise one more time. One more blurb here that I got to tell you of some lessons learned. This dough, since it's kind of more like a pie dough, where you have chunks of butter or a biscuit, where you have chunks of butter um, suspended in the dough, not it hasn't been melted, it is not dispersed evenly. What the heat does to that is it melts the butter and creates a nice flaky crust. Perfect, right? Yes, 
but I have never really worked with a crust like this when it came to a rise, having a rise time. It's always been a biscuit, which doesn't have yeast and neither does pie dough. So with this, I put it in a slightly warm oven with my light on. And what I did was I melted some of that butter. When I say slightly warm, I'm talking like, you know, 80 to 100 degrees, pretty low temperature. But what I did was I ruined the um, some of the consistency of it. It was still flaky and delicious, but it could have been more flaky and delicious. So this dough would be much better just rising on your counter at room temperature. And then it, it stays stronger also, and that will help you not to have any of your delicious filling ooze out. We do not want our filling to ooze out. Here is our gorgeous risen roll. Now, um, I'm impatient. I only let it rise for one hour. Uh, the recipe said two, but it's like you could tell it's nighttime. You're like, I gotta get this thing done. So I'm putting it in a 375 degree oven for one hour. Despite our leakage, I have faith it's going to taste good. So here we are. So we're going to let it sit for a good, oh, it should sit for an hour, but I don't know if I can wait that long. Okay, it definitely, um, when you cut it, it flakes more like a pie crust than other um, nut rolls that I've done, which would explain my trouble with the crust and my fear. Okay, let's see what we see. We had so much explosion happening on the outside that I'm afraid I won't have a good spiral inside. Oh, but I do. Look at that gorgeousness. OMG. Okay, I had to get in my jammies. This is huge, so I am going to cut it in half and then try it. So, um, you know, I started this at 11 a.m. Now granted, it was mostly a bunch of rise times. Um, oh my gosh, it's juicy. Wow, it's still slightly warm. I let it sit a good 30 minutes. I'm scared to try it, it looks so good. Are we ready? I could do not. That is absolutely spectacular. And I say that so much, I'm like the, the gal that cried wolf, but I mean it. Wow. I remember that flavor. I remember that, that filling. I totally remember that as a kid. I'm so glad you guys got to see my drama at the beginning and my fear of what to do with the dough that was so dry. I'm not sure if it was a mistake on the recipe, who knows, but sometimes you just have to keep going and figure it out and it worked. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Sorry I'm in my jammies, but it's late. Late meaning 7.22. <laughs> Please subscribe below make this amazing Christmas nut roll all year long. Have a great day or night.